want to um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, I think that uh, one of the things that Bob said was how important Tim Farley and uh, Robert Lancaster and others have been to our to our movement, and I think that we really need to give more kudos than he has taken to Bob Blaskowitz here for all the work he's done. He has given up hours and hours, if not weeks and weeks of, of labor to this uh, Brzezinski, uh, whatever you want to call it, and I am always inspired by him. I don't know how he finds the time to do this, and I'm always overwhelmed with the things he does and with such passion. So I, I wanted to talk about And um, so, all right, I, I am so glad you're here. This is the end of TAM. You guys are, should be all fired up. I know you're tired, as we all are, and not getting a lot of sleep. Has this been an awesome town or what? I mean, yeah. Woo! is, in my opinion, is enough activism, enough workshops that are teaching you how to do these things. And Bob and I talked about this, oh, by the way, my name is Susan Gervais. Um, and Bob and I talked about these, this, the, how we're gonna do this workshop. And I should mention, Bob and I, Tim Farley, Mark Edward, Jim Underdown, and I will be doing a workshop for CFI in October in um, uh, LA. And hopefully if it's successful, we're going to be doing more workshops in the future at different places. And we will come to your town. If you can get enough skeptics together, we'll actually pay so that they'll pay for our room and board. We're cheap, you know, and, you know, sleep on whatever. They can sleep on couches and things. And, and airfare. We will come and we'll do an activism workshop, which is, this is kind of a, an idea of what we're going to do. But it's much more hands-on. So Bob and I talked about having you guys break out in groups, having you guys start working on problems, and do some real activism today, but we just do not have the time. But this is what we want to do, and I think this is what is needed. Because a lot of these lectures and, and conferences you go to, it's very passive, you sit in the audience, you are listening, and it's wonderful and great, and that's what I did for many years. And finally, after listening to Tim Farley, I said, it is time for me to stand up and do something, because I am done. It is, we are need to get this done, and, it's, and we've just been preaching to the choir for far too long. So now is our time. So this lecture that I'm about to give you is um, going to be very quick because I only have so much time. All the information I'm giving you is going to be on my website. And um, so you're not going to be able to take notes quick enough and I'm not going to be able to have time to explain everything. So I apologize in advance. This, what we're doing is Bob gave you kind of what we have done, what projects have done that were successful. What I'm going to do is I'm hoping to inspire you to take on something. So close the doors because you lock them. No. <laughs> do not give it away from me because I am a skeptical activist and I feel very passionate about the fact that we need to stop preaching to the choir and start doing something to get rid of this nonsense that's out there. I'm really tired of it. Now my main project is cruel skepticism on Wikipedia. And I don't have time to go into detail explaining it about it to you. If you want to join my Wikipedia project, we need you, especially if you speak other languages. But it is work. My teammates are, uh, the, my peers are amazing, the stuff they do. It is incredible. And I train and I train and I train and it is a lot of work. But some people find it fun work, you know, I mean, it's work, but it's fun work to some people. So it's not made for everybody. So I'm not going to be lecturing on GSOW today. Sorry, because we're going to talk about the things that are probably, you know, you guys can find something that fits your lifestyle, something that maybe is something that's going to take a lot of time or something that's very, very quick. And as I said, I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. Um, we had, I, you, we've been here together for a few days now, and you might have seen that some of my friends thought it would be embarrassing to me to, um, you might have seen, to hold the sign up over my head when I sat down that said, Susan Gerbig is the most powerful woman in skepticism. And I laugh because I don't embarrass, but um, and it's been kind of fun. And it's a joke, okay? You know, I know I'm not the most powerful woman in skepticism, 
But I wanted to kind of just bring that back out to you all. You all are the most powerful people in skepticism. When we are together, especially with crowdsource projects, there's no stopping to us, stopping us. All these wonderful things that Bob mentioned and more we can achieve and do if we just kind of find our passion and you guys match up to the things that are probably the things that are your, that you feel passionate about. Okay, and so, bye. So here's where we go from here. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. We're gonna, uh, this is Daniel Luxton, one of my favorite people who started off with a blog and um, talking about, and see, you're gonna find all these links. You'll be able to go to these links when you go to my website that'll have, you know, so you can find all this information. So like I said, try not to write it down. Just try to absorb all the information I'm gonna give you as quickly and just go, leave this room going, wow, I feel inspired, I wanna do something, I wanna do something, I think there's something for me to do. And maybe it's not exactly what I mentioned, but maybe it's gonna inspire you to think of something else that is very similar to it that you have the special skills to be able to do. So, all right, here we go. Where do we go from here? So you can see what it says up there. One of the things you should do is follow Tim Farley's blog, Skeptical Software Tools. He has the tools that are gonna make whatever project you want to do easier for you to do, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So he's just got the, the software and the, all, there's all kinds of things out there that are being invented all the time that Tom, uh, Tim writes about. So this is my website, SusanGerbic.com. You are going to find these slides on SusanGerbic.com, hopefully today, and then you'll be able to, to go through these. So here we go. So GSOW is a project that is three years old. Happy birthday to us. We just had our third birthday. And many of my teammates are here. A lot of them have the, the gorilla shirts on that I'm wearing. See? Thank you. Thank you, Kyle, from um, Carbon, Carbon, Carbon Dating. Oh my gosh right over my head, Carbon Dating, for giving us this awesome logo, and uh, for free, he's just an awesome guy for doing everything he can. This is something that he has done for skepticism. It's given us a better logo, and, and you know, really inspired us to be more of a team. You can buy these, by the way, on Evolve Dish. All right, Skeptic Action. Some of you have my little uh, cards, business cards for Skeptic Action. This is one, some followers said, it's uh, one action a day will help keep pseudoscience at bay. We, you can follow this project on Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus. And this is something that once you're signed up for, and by signing up, I mean you've downloaded Web of Trust or Rebutter, it will take you maybe 30 seconds a day. This is a project I started because nobody was doing it, and I thought how wonderful Web of Trust is and Rebutter is. And I do not have time to go into detail what those two are, but they're amazing skeptical projects that. Well, Web of Trust wasn't meant to be a skeptic project, but it is, just like Wikipedia. That's, it's, it's, you know, dominated by skeptical rules, you know, of evidence and so on. So, Web of Trust and Rebutter are both on my website with videos that uh, Shane Greenup, who is the uh, owner of Rebutter, he made a video just for the skeptic action followers to show you how to do it and that kind of thing. But this is a project that will take maybe 30 seconds of your day once you've got the plugin installed on your computer. Easy, easy, easy stuff to do. Fun, fun stuff. Fish Barrel is another program, uh, um, another thing that we aren't using very much. We started to use it. This is a site that the FD, that allows you to be able to go to a, a website that's making medical claims. Uh, once you fill out all the information on the website, um, then the next time you do it, it just takes it like two or three minutes. You're able to copy and paste and put into Fish Barrel um, all the information that a website is making a medical claim. So like a homeopath or whatever, if they're saying that they can fight cancer, you copy it, you, you hit a few other buttons, and it sends an alert to the FDA that there is a website making a medical claim. So that's, that's something that's really awesome. We just need to start using it a lot more. Um, and these are other ideas of things that people have done and maybe you can assist with. This is a very, very good friend of mine and a very great friend of uh, uh, the JREB. Um, Kitty, and um, she had a, a website called badaliens.org, and this was a website that she had run for a while. I think it's kind of gone now. Um, if this is something that inspires you, you can contact her. She's easy to find and um, start working on this. It's a website for people who think they've been abducted. She's very kind, just like Robert Lancaster was. People can come to you and um, talk about the, the fact that they think they've been abducted by aliens. 
We have to remember as skeptics that regardless of the fact that we think that's nonsense, but to these people, they feel it is real. This is a real experience, and it must be terrifying to think that you can't sleep at night because you may be abducted by aliens. So it's, it's a terrifying thing, and I think we need to be kind, and she's helped so many people by talking to them about things and trying to encourage them to go to the doctor and you know that kind of stuff. Here's a book she read, wrote with um, a very talented uh, artist named Noah uh, Whipple, I believe, who was at town last year. And this is a book uh, on fairy tales, to children's fairy tales, and the proceeds usually go to uh, the j -Rep. So this is something that can be done if you have an artistic nature. She's just taken fairy tales and just changed them around a little bit. Jeff Wagg, who is uh, an older, uh, he's, an, he's a friend of mine from you know years ago. He has a project called College of Curiosity, um, and he's always looking for people who are interested in that. So just take a picture of that screen if you, if you or just go to my website. The 1023 campaign, which is Bob has already mentioned, is another one of those. I, I don't know what it is with the Australians and the and the, um, and the people in the UK. They just they're just maybe they're just really detailed or something, but they just come up with some of the most awesome things. This is Skeptic Cal in California, Berkeley. It's held every year around May, and this is the largest overdose of people taking. Um, uh, suicide. I photographed this. There's 200 and something people taking an overdose. How many fatalities? Uh, we're still, well, no. the numbers aren't in yeah. 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 Here's another project that somebody had suggested to me. I think it was Bob was talking about this. Uh, like a What's the Harm uh, site that Tim Farley does. This is What's the Harm Dr. Oz. Maybe this would be something where somebody could kindly collect. Uh, ideas, uh, I mean, uh, you know, possible things that he has done that, and collect it in a way that's readable, uh, well written, and you know, so that it would come up in the search engines when people are looking for Dr. Oz. Lanyard is another wonderful site that I hope that every single one of you is going to be using when you go home. Everything that is about a conference, every blog, every podcast, every video, your Facebook portraits, as you put them up on Facebook, you're going to take the URL and just stick it into Lanyard. That way everybody can see everybody's photos, everybody can see everybody's uh, blog, uh, podcast, and you don't have to own it. It doesn't have to be your blog or your video. It's just, this is uh, something you find. Like this lecture right now that's being recorded will go on Lanyard, so you'll be able to find it. My slides will go on Lanyard, and so on. And this way, we can all kind of network together. GSOW uses this site all the time. Um, skepticality, all right. I'm on Skepticality every two weeks. I love a lot of podcasts. There's so many great podcasts out there. This is a, um, um, a winner of the Occam Award from the UK this year. I was very honored to be there to accept the award. But I'm not speaking just about skepticality. You know how you listen to these podcasts and they say to you at the end, if you like our podcast, could you please go and rate us? You know what? They mean it. We need you to go rate these podcasts. If you take just a few minutes a day or every so often, rate a podcast. The, every time you rate it, it brings up their, their, um, their notoriety. It, it helps out. It branches out. And it's getting beyond the choir when you're able to do something like this because there are people out there who still haven't heard about skept uh, scientific skepticism and, and so on. How many people in this room have come to town or whatever because of a podcast? Thank you. All right. So we need to rate these podcasts to get them out to others and continue. So rate a podcast. Maybe every time you change your light bulbs in your house, you know how you, your, uh, you change your time in your clocks twice a year? Or those who change your time? That might be a good idea. Here's a, here's a project that is done by uh, Pamela Gay. And uh, I know she needs help. I, she needs support. She needs help in this. This is a really great uh, thing to look into. Uh, Penny for NASA. This is a pro, uh, uh, something kind of from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who uh, has talked about if we could just get a full penny for NASA's budget instead of the half a penny that they're getting right now, we could change the world. <laughs> but um, so. <laughs> So Nathan, Nathan Miller over here sitting down, one of my one of my great editors, leader of uh, one of my uh, English Wikipedia teams, who's just totally embarrassed right now. 
Uh, he wrote the Wikipedia page for Penny for NASA, but we first put a mention on Neil deGrasse Tyson's Wikipedia page. When he came out in Cosmos, Neil deGrasse Tyson's Wikipedia page views went from 100,000 a month to 330,000 views a month. And so Penny for NASA is now receiving about 1,000 views a month because it's on his page. But first, uh, Nathan had to create the page. It took a year, but we got it. So this is a program. Look into it if you're interested in astronomy and increasing NASA's budget. I know they need to know. Franklin's List. Ah, love this. This is a friend of mine, Shane Trimmer, has had friends. And Jimmy Scott, I think, is also involved. So you know it's awesome. So uh, Franklin's List is an action. What they're trying to do is get, check this out. What an idea. Let's raise some funds and help support people who are STEM, you know, science, medicine, all that kind of stuff, into office. What a concept, OK? So this is something else if you want to, if you got a few dollars you want to donate, or if you want to run for office yourself, which would be really great. Odds must be crazy. If you guys have not seen this site, you need to go here. This is an IIG. Uh, Project John Rail and Wendy Hughes uh, have come up with this idea, and Jared Kaufman had, um, was the, the originator of this Odds Must Be Crazy. This site is a backdoor to getting people thinking about odds and coincidences, and you need to get to this and have your coworkers look at the site and so on, because this is a very easy way to talk to people who are perhaps a little not thinking the way we probably like them to think in the critical thinking area, but you can have conversations, really great conversations about coincidences and what does it really mean when you have a, when you have a coincidence. They break it down, they tell it in a fun, entertaining way. You have to check out the site. This is definitely the way you show your, your friends and family. Here's a friend of mine, uh, Brad Levin in uh, the UK. I met uh, when I was in, uh, lecturing at QED this last year, which if you can't, if you can get to QED, go to QED. It's a, uh, Manchester every every April. Skeptical is just that. It's going to be a free thinkers in a field. This is a man who's, who has run conferences uh, for years and he's going to try to put on one and he's looking for volunteers and people to help out with, with that. Doubtful news. What a great idea. Sharon Hill, I'm sure, always needs some help. And if you can help her out with, with this, this is also getting out beyond the choir. Uh, Edinburgh Skeptics, there's an idea uh, that they did, ghost busted tours in our town of Edinburgh, which we, uh, we were just in, which is an amazing place, you should go if you can. Uh, Edinburgh Skeptics, I'm very, very impressed with them. They uh, did their own ghost tours, but they're ghost busted tours, creative idea. Um, and does uh, anybody get the reference mm -hmm. down with this sort of thing? Okay, cool. Um, Sterling introduced me, my son Sterling introduced me to uh, Scientology anon kind of activities. This is really powerful. Apparently in Germany, well in, in um, Berlin, um, Scientology is almost done. They've almost closed up shop. They've only got like 100 members or something like that. And part of the reason is because of anon protests. So, you know, logical fallacy tarot. This is uh, Trekkie Lynch. He is coming up with some beautiful tarot cards that you can use for logical fallacies. He's been working on this project for a year or more. He could definitely use some encouragement to finish because um, everybody's like, I can't wait until we get these cards out. You'll be able to use them in a lot of different ways, maybe using the beautiful, beautiful artwork in your online discussions every time somebody does a logical fallacy. It's better than saying, that's a straw man. It's like, ooh, you can do this beautiful card. So, Trekkie Lynch, you can see his name on there. Uh, here's a couple more things. A good friend of mine in Salinas area, Monterey County Skeptics, he has a Christmas tree farm. He's going to be doing school lectures um, talking about, you know, evolution and, and bringing in the school kids to, to talk about, you know, the growth of trees and all that kind of stuff. So maybe somebody in this audience has some kind of niche where that is something that might inspire you to think of how you can get school kids to and talk about biology and so on. Um, science festivals like the Edinburgh Science Festival, um, Dragon Con, they were doing, and several other cons, they were doing kind of fun stuff and then they added on the science stuff. So Edinburgh Festival every August runs for the entire month. It's an arts and crafts kind of thing. Well, they did a science, they went to the skepticism thing and just latched on to it. So possibly your town may do some kind of festival that's science related or whatever, if you could bring skepticism in there, bring it in. 
Uh, reserve your local library, show the movie Cosmos, invite the public. Easy thing to do if you are so inclined to do that. Get involved with science classes. You can mentor for science uh, camps, judge. If you're into astronomy and you have a nice telescope, it doesn't have to be super fancy. It's not the Hubble. We don't expect that. But if you can volunteer with children in groups and say, and say, hey, I have a, a, a telescope. Can I bring it in? We can show the kids um, Saturn and so on and Venus. Please do so. I mean, that's really appreciated. Vaccine clinics. I, I think this is so important. You can contact your local uh, uh, the vaccination areas and ask them, do you have any need? Uh, can, can we, do you have literature that I can just, just uh, hand out? Blood drive, same thing. Sponsor speakers to events. If you, have, if you have money, this is what the screen is for, if you have money or access to money, um, you can, some people you know, do, there are people I'm told, um, sponsor people to go to events. You could uh, give micropayments to a uh, podcast or video cast or, or uh, things that means a lot. A $10 donation a month, $5 donation a month means a lot to these people to keep their projects going. Frequent flyer miles. Good Lord, let's donate them to different conferences and see if they can fly in speakers, especially if it's a speaker you really want to see. Scholarships to conferences, there's all kinds of these different things. People have great web skills, they just need to donate them to help people out. Um, audio expertise, I am not an audio person and I'm learning as I go, people are constantly helping me. If you're listening to a podcast and you just think, ah, it would be so much better if they just did this, well you know what, the person who's speaking may not have those skills and somebody out here in this audience may be the one who could approach them and say, kindly, um, let me uh, give you some advice about how to get rid of this, that, or the other. Artwork, like I talked about with Kyle, Carl, uh, Kyle Saunders and uh, Noah Whipple. If you are an artist, we can use you in many ways in the skeptical. Music, same thing. Here's a friend of mine, Gary Goldberg, that I met at a Mensa conference that I went to, I uh, spoke at. He had, uh, was receiving uh, in Red Plum advertisements in your local newspaper. I think you've probably seen these Red Plum. They were advertising, um, I can't say the word, it's a homeopathic drug for flu. It starts with an O and it's about that long. And um, he wrote to them and said, look, this, it's flu season. You're, you're, you're advertising on sale. It was some sale having on this homeopathic drug. And that's not a cool thing. And they said, you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm going to forward your, your message to the, uh, ap the advertising people or whatever it was. And they stopped plugging this, this uh, homeopathic flu medicine because this one man wrote one letter and followed up. And then here's another thing. There was a website, uh, a newspaper article, I think this is the Washington Post. You might be able to see down in the corner, there's several doctors that are mentioned uh, for this diabetic study. He contacted those doctors and said, did you realize that your name is being used? And they were like, whoa, we did not know that. So then that was able to get that changed. This is something he just did on his own. Mark Edward, um, and Jason Caputo, he, uh, oh my god, I don't even know where to start with activism this man does. But um, he was hired by Inside Edition to go to a, uh, to out her in the ways. And he's wearing on his, he's, he took this with an iPhone and it wasn't really great quality, sorry. But on his lapel, Mark is wearing a picture of his son um, who has died. And uh, Teresa had told him quite a bit about how, what a kind soul his son was and so on, of course. She was not able to pick up that her son is very much alive and that uh, Mark is a skeptic with a big S, thank you very much. So um, one of the things that Mark Edward advocates to you all is that if you are so inclined, you may have to spend some money. You may have to put some money in these people's pockets, but what you can do is so powerful. You go, you sit in the audience, and when they make a mistake, you laugh. And you laugh heartily, and you laugh loudly. <laughs> he says these psychics are entertainers. That's what they're doing up on stage. They are entertainers. And if you mess with them a little bit, and you bring them to the audience, it will set off all the other people in the audience, and they can't throw you out, and they can't do anything to harm you, and they, it, it's just you're just laughing. So practice your laughs. Whoa! Or something beforehand, and just be like, you know, get your, get it going. So um, <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to try, and you get in the audience and you laugh, like I said. You can sit in the cheap seats in the back, too. So whatever you can do to get on their nerves and make it so these, peop 
people don't want to come back, and it ruins the whole mood of the thing, and then they are thrown off the whole rest of the time. Oh my gosh. Uh, here's another thing that Mark Edward did. Uh, there was a medium that's oh. yeah, on uh, ABC's uh, website, and uh, he called him up over and over. This medium was getting evidence, uh, getting help and stuff and all that stuff. So he kept calling him up. You know, they said, oh, we've got an expert on stuff. We've got an expert on stuff with this medium. And so he kept calling him up saying he might talk to a medium. He pretended he was an old man saying that he just lost his wife. And then he'd say, then he'd call back another day saying that he was, you know, on health. He needed to help the experts. And they kept, you know, like they'd hang up on him or they'd put him on hold for like an hour. So this man, Ramon, D-O-L-Z, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pronounce it, who read Mark's blog, just a school teacher, elementary school teacher in that area, he wrote to that, station's, that station and said that he's an elementary school teacher and that he would love to have this psychic uh, take the million dollar challenge because the school district needed the million dollars so bad. And so he asked if he would, and he talked to them as if it was his child. He says, my kids, you know, it would be so wonderful. She could prove her abilities, and we could get this money, and we wouldn't have to, you know, lay off all these teachers, or we could do all this. And he talks like in that way. And guess what? She was removed from that website, they said, they, and every time we contact, we contact him afterwards, they said, you're just gonna have to contact her herself. We don't have any con we don't have any we don't have anything to do with this woman. And you know, when Mark said, Well, what's her contact? Then you'll just have to Google it. So they were really upset that these we just made trouble for him, is what Mark and uh, Ramon did. Are you local to a conference? You know what? Yeah. Uh, if you're local to a conference, can you please maybe help out the other people who are gonna be attending conferences with a blog with some ideas, with um, uh, you know, places to eat, where to go, things to do. I'd love to see a skeptic tour map of people who like to travel, things to see in areas. Uh, historical sites, um, Jeanine here in the front row. Uh, also here, uh, this is the uh, Jerry Andrews site. They got this, this uh, building, his home, put on the National uh, Register of Oregon, preserving this home and all his artifacts. The Robert Ingersoll birthplace was the same thing was done. We have conference, we're having a conference, CFI is having a conference, I believe in August, that's going to be talking about Robert Ingersoll and how important he is to our history. Um, here's the, what I said about laughing. Amazon donations, Nathan Miller was starting up, you didn't know what you were in this, did you? Was starting up a site whenever you're gonna go to Amazon and buy something. If you go through a skeptic's website first, you just click on the skeptic website of your choice that has an Amazon link, and then go make your purchases on Amazon, they get a, a few pennies of your, of your purchase each time. And uh, Nathan was trying to come up with a way of doing that so that you would audit, so you, if you forgot, you know, it would remind you or something like that. So see Nathan Miller right there. Uh, Independent Investigations Group. Oh my gosh, I can't even go there because we're gonna run out of time. Fundraisers, Knitters for Skepticism, uh, Crafts and Items Donated for Scholarships. We need donations for all kinds of things. Uh, if you're being sued by Wu, we, what we would like to have is somebody to come up with some kind of way of funding, a uh, fund set up for people to, to donate to that in case you're being attacked. Uh, the JREF and the CFI also have teacher clients. We need to find a way of getting that best to our teachers and to, uh, maybe a central site to kind of get this out there. Donate your magazines, science magazines, skeptic magazines to the waiting areas of your doctor's office, your oncologist, your, your local Wu. Um, Skeptics in the pub event, if there isn't one locally in your area, start one. If there is one, attend it, and always thank your organizer. Buy them a meal once in a while, say thank you. We're trying to get outside the choir, so please review our books and thank our authors. Um, they don't all, and also on the podcast, run for office at your local school board. That's where you're going to have the most effect, or to support them. I'll become an expert on something, the other Krasinski patient group, we've already talked about that. Book review project. This is Kathy Moyne, whose hand is going to right there in the front row. This is something that she's going to be uh, running. It is. We are coming with names. Uh, we came up with the idea of Amazonian skeptics. What the idea is, and we're not sure of that, but we're, and that kind of fits the gorilla stuff. But what the idea is is that we're going to. What she's going to coordinate is people who are interested in writing reviews of paranormal books. Probably before they come out, she has a way of getting the books. Um, thank you, Skeptic Magazine. And they're going to get the books, and you can and uh, free. 
and then you would read, read the book and write a very nice review. I mean, not a nice review, but I mean, a well-written review, not like a full of ad hominems and all that, but a well-written review. And then we can put it up on Amazon and other, uh, other places like Barnes and Noble and so on, so that whenever the book comes out, there's already some really well done reviews uh, about the book and that can help a lot as well. So she's uh, coordinating that effort and um, you know, if you're interested in reading books, you know, somebody's gotta do it. So I believe I am done if, uh, let me see, was that everything? Gosh, I did that faster than I thought. So I really apologize I had to do that so fast. And I believe we are ready for Q&A. Questions? So get up there and ask. Try to, try to pull. The answer is F. Scott Fitzgerald. It always is. Is this on? Yes. So, uh, but first thing I wanted to say, just real quick, was you, Bob, you mentioned the 1023 campaign. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to caution everybody, especially here in the U.S., if you're ever tempted to repeat what they did, right. repeat that demonstration, be very, very careful, especially in the U.S., because there are many products that are labeled homeopathic which are not, that do have active ingredients. And, yeah, and, and one of the things that, that they put in their packet was instructions on how to make your own homeopathy because you can't trust what's actually in the package. So that's, that's absolutely true. true. So yeah. the, 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 the other thing I wanted to ask about was um, some of the, uh, the, the sites that you mentioned, especially those that are, uh, that are you know, specifically dedicated to fighting particular brands of blue, like, uh, like Stop Sylvia Brown or the 1023 Campaign or the other Brzezinski Patient Group, um, and you mentioned Stop the ABN as well. Um, the question I have is, you know, those, those sound great, I agree with you. It sounds like they're really doing the right thing. It sounds like they've really done it, have done it well, and it makes us feel great. It really, you know, gets us feeling raw, raw. But how do we know that? I mean, we're skeptics, right? How do we know that um, it's making a difference? You know what? Uh, and and, and the, 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 well, let, me, let me let me finish. The other the other half of this is. Um, uh, you mentioned the Stop the ABN. They actually have metrics yes. demonstrating their success. And so the, the, in addition to that question, I also wanted to implore everyone, as you're embarking on new projects like this in the future, it would be best if you, you know, think, like a, think as skeptics, think as scientists. It would be best if, we, if, if from the very beginning, you plan from the beginning, how am I going to measure success? Because as, as, as you know, Susan, we have limited resources and manpower, and we want to be as effective as possible. It's true. Uh, and, and, and that's um, the, the Stop the ABN, um, they had interested uh, uh, people who were into social sciences who were able to uh, you know, evaluate the, the, the work that they did. Um, it, for something like the other Brzezinski patient group, um, you know, I'm just an English teacher who's writing stories. Um, uh, but we, the way that we, we've kind of figured that we're doing all right is by looking at our Google rankings, um, uh, the, 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 the way in which uh, people have volunteered their own time and uh, talents to translate, uh, for instance, the Brzezinski page into, into Polish, just right. taking it to his native language, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, and, um, you know, we, we, we hear that there, the, the Brzezinski Clinic seems to be firing a lot of people, uh, laying them off. So um, we think that there has been a, a, a change. Um, but you're absolutely right. If you want to convince people, if you want to convince skeptics that what you're doing is worth doing, find a way to, to measure it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, not only convince people that what we're doing is worth doing, but also we don't want to be doing things that aren't effective because that's a waste of our limited resources. Right. We want to totally hit them as hard as we can. Mm -hmm. um, if I may, one last thing. The, the, the one suggestion. Have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. No time. Just uh, uh, CFAR, the Center for Applied Rationality. They have a lot of great suggestions mm -hmm. on how to, to do this kind of uh, metric. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. Hi guys. Hello. Um, nobody wants people to get involved more than I do. You guys went through a long list of different things that people can do. Um, but the two activities that you guys are best known for. 
things that you spend a lot of time diving into and landing. Um, Bob, the case of the Brzezinski stuff, you spent two years doing this stuff. Susan, you spent, what, three years, four years? on three years on uh, GSOW, and I mean, those have been, in most skeptical metrics, immensely successful. Some of the most successful things we've done, I applaud you guys for that. Um, but I want to take a second to talk about being effective and get your take on this, because you talked to, you both talked about the 1023 campaign and uh, how effective it was. Well, I ended up writing the Q&A for that because the communication was so terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, I, uh, could you spend a minute talking about how people can actually dig in, do things like, I don't know, press training, adding whatever it is that their, their, uh, their level of expertise is, and picking one and really diving into it, versus doing a lot of things at a very shallow level. Well, Jay, I see your hand going up there for somebody who's an expert who would love to run a website or something to volunteer, Jay Diamond. <laughs> Reason for reason is the same. Uh, well, you, you know I already do about 47 different things. Yes, you know, like, that's, that's three shy of 50, so you're. So, we need people to find that there is a problem, as you have just done, and as the gentleman said, that we need more, better ways of measuring uh, things. We need people to step up and say, this is a problem. I think we could do this better. Here's maybe a solution for it, and I'm taking it on. It's my baby. So that's how I would throw it right back at you, Jake. It's a great idea. So yes, we need people who can probably look at things like the 1023 campaign and say, this wasn't quite written. And we're not talking necessarily the British one. You know, I'm not sure. But um, maybe when it was done, the American version, I think. Well, actually, when that, when that went to go worldwide, I mean, they had done something that was very tailored to Britain. They really hadn't thought through the Q&A. Right. I've seen this in a lot of skeptical activist events where people just haven't quite thought through how to, how to take all that stuff out there. And I had the advantage of being press trained by Fortune 50 companies. I see his hand going up higher. What do you guys Thank think? you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just, just this idea of adding some, um, uh, some value. I, I think that expertise. there would be a, a lot of value in professionalization of this sort of thing. I would love to see money behind this. I'd love to see some lawyers behind this. I'd love to see some trained press people behind this. You know, C CFI and, and JREF have done a great job supporting a lot of the skeptical activism, um, but we still don't have that core, you know, um, activist uh, uh, foundation uh, upon which to build uh, those, those uh, edifices we'd like to see go up. Um, and, if, if you know ways of doing that, or you know lawyers who are willing to devote some time to this type of thing, please let us know. We, we, we'd love to see it. So well, thank absolutely, you. professionalization is key. Last question, I guess. Uh, we can always continue this discussion later. It, just find us somewhere else. Uh, uh, my question builds upon the previous two. Uh, you spoke about a bunch of the uh, successful uh, activism projects. I am as interested in the failures, big and small, of the skeptical activism projects, uh, in part because I think we have a lot to learn from them, to understand what causes a particular activism project to crash and burn, is to avoid making that, those same mistakes in the future. And I was wondering if uh, if you could give some examples that you know of, of where uh, projects have, uh, have struggled and why they struggled, and what we can learn from them. I, I think the first one that, 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 that comes to my mind is is where I met Susan. Um, we, we were doing a, a uh, trying to coordinate something to, to kind of expose chip coffee. Oh, yeah. um, and and there, we were trying to use the global network of skeptics. In order. Chip coffee, he's a, a, a psychic who uh, tells children that the voices in their heads are real. All right, so he's psychic kids. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, uh, he, he tours and he, he does his, his, he's really not a great cold reader, um, but he has a lot of, of, of fervent fans. And we got, uh, you know, we, we a number of, of groups around the country to show up at his, um, uh, book it, it, well, it is book signing and his shows, and uh, to take notes and to, you know, kind of survey. But we didn't really have an end game. We didn't like, really have a plan. And so we had all this information, but nothing to do, you know. We, 
it wasn't tailored. We have since done something similar with the, the, the Brzezinski uh, group when they were showing the, the new movie where the skeptics are portrayed as an evil cabal. Um, and we wanted to know everything that was said during the Q&A with the filmmaker because we would send those to people who would be able to put those statements in context and that actually led to things like um, once, uh, uh, it, it, very early on during the, when the movie was making the circuit uh, of pre-release screenings, uh, we heard that the patient group was gonna start um, a website, a and for All, and so we decided to grab the Facebook page, the Twitter handle, and everything that we could in order to delay that and make sure that that, you know, um, uh, didn't get off the ground, and we did hobble them, and that was because we had a plan, we specifically knew that we wanted that type of information. Um, so, yeah, give up. Well, and I was just thinking that chip coffee thing, that was that was something else. We we were really working on that, and like you said, I think most of Mark Edward and James Hunterjohn and some of the IIG people went through that. Mark Edward got thrown out for <laughs> some of the things he was doing. I remember this very clearly, it was pretty funny. Um, you're absolutely right, Reed. We need to know the, the where we're failed, and the problem with it is, is that we just do not have the time. We could do a whole workshop on things that failed, and when Bob and I talk in October, maybe that's something we, we'll be talking about with our audience, and, and hopefully coming to your town, or your country, or your city, just you know, get your skeptics together, get your pity mates out, help us pay for the airfare, we'll go, and we can talk about the failures, and then as a discussion, the group of people will discuss why it failed and how maybe we could have fixed that and, and, and moved on. But in my experience, this is just my opinion, I think most projects fail because a lack of leadership. The person who is in, who who is in, who decided they wanted to do the project didn't understand the encompassing enormous amounts of time and energy that's going to end up having to take over you. You're, it's going to rule your life. You're going to dream about it and you can't get away from it because you become so passionate about it. And a lot of people do not have the time and energy or the, just the personality to handle some of those things. Um, I think about um, the IIG starting up in, in many areas and it just, their intention is good, but they just don't have either the skills, the support, or the time to follow it through. It fails and then everybody gets discouraged and then nobody else wants to start anything else up again. It's, it's, it's the people, it's all about the people, it's all about you. Um, having the passion, following through. Bob and I and many other people are always here for you for support until, of course, we totally burn out. Um, and um, so then we'll need to come back and go back to you. The next skeptical activist to step up, I'm hoping that there's people out there today that to step up and step up. I did want to mention really quick, I do have some edited Wikipedia brochures so if anybody wanted those just generically, you don't have to join the project. You can take them home, so I don't have to take them on the airplane home. But, you can always talk to us later. Bob and I are very approachable. We're very easy to and find. If, if you would like to be on the, the action list um, for uh, Brzezinski stuff, uh, contact me at skepticsprotect at gmail.com. That, that's the best way to get on that list. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll have one question to put my contact information on the uh, slide for the Amazon review. Yeah, the, the maybe it would be not fine, quite named Amazonian skeptics, not for sure positive that that's the name, but uh, yeah, she's going to have her information on, on there so that you guys, this is the project where we start here. Most projects start at TAM. Most, yeah. most projects are inspired by TAM. I have been, and you know, TAM and the other workshops, uh, other conferences at CFI, when you leave a conference like this, you know, conferences are amazing things. Go to a conference. If that's the first thing you do, go. Absolutely. And if you don't have one in your area, start a skeptic camp. Or something. Right. Well, thank you very much.